Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Isaac Mankita. I'm going to be facilitating this session. Uh, I'm very happy to have uh, Dr. Jason Rock here from UCLA Health Sciences IT. Uh, Dr. Jason Rock is an education developer at UCLA's Education Technology Services team. And uh, he has over two decades experience in instructional design, multimedia production, and education technology. And um, Jason also collaborates closely with faculty to create innovative learning content at UCLA, um, health science schools, and other units. Um, we're going to be, um, this feels like it's really loud. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be, uh, we're doing this as a hybrid session. I'm going to be monitoring the chat um, uh, uh, happening over in the Zoom part of things. Um, and also monitoring for, of course, questions, though um, Jason is interested in having the questions near the end of the presentation. So with that, I'm going to turn over to Dr. Jason Block. Thanks, uh, Isaac. Okay, how's that sound? Don't stand too close. Is that good? Good in the audience? All right, cool. Yeah, thanks, Isaac, and, and the whole staff is like a whole team um, helping out here. And thanks again for Berkeley hosting this event. They've, you know, put a lot into it. So, you know, round of applause to them. Appreciate, appreciate everything you've done. I know it's a lot of work. Um, and appreciate the time slot, too. It's not, not bad. Uh, uh, I know one time I, I had the very last time saw the conference. Uh, Catherine, you're you're presenting with me, and um, so that's always fun because uh, you know you get a tough audience because you know half of them are like ready to bolt out the door and beat the traffic if you're not saying anything useful. So I guess we're just you know um, competing with lunch at this point. But uh, yeah, my goal is to make everything here useful. Um, and, and so far, has everyone been enjoying the conference? Some of them have been really useful, useful presentations. Yeah. In fact, um, I like the one about uh, how to run a hybrid meeting that was here with the, say, that was a good one. So I'm going to try to apply some of the notes that I took from there. So like, how are we doing with the Zoom? Like, how many participants we have? You know, because 17 participants. So hi to everyone on Zoom. And um, we want to have you participate this uh, as well. So open up your chat and you can, um, you know, connect with us there in the chat if you have questions or comments. Um, and thanks to everybody in the audience for coming. So I know uh, you, sometimes it can be hard to choose which session to go to. Um, so thanks for coming and deciding to use this one. Um, so I think, uh, you know, this one will be pretty valuable in terms of the information that we uh, provide. Um, so especially if uh, you're like instructors or a anybody here, instructors or instructional designers, raise your hand, okay, cool. Um, and what about the rest of you? Are you, what about like, are you more technical staff? Raise your hand if you're more on that side. Okay, cool. Well, we'll have, we have stuff for for everyone, I think, um, in this one. So let's see, let's get started. Um, so I threw this slide in last minute as a little bit of a, a serendipity here. I was in the hotel room on Monday, just flipping through the, the channels and the Simpsons episode came on right up to the scene. Um, and I guess this episode's about Homer, uh, wanting to become an inventor so um this is so he visits a scientist on it, looking for advice on how to invent things so he says look i just want to know how to invent things tell me and professor frank says uh all you have to do is think of things that people need but which don't exist yet and homer says you mean like an electric blanket mobile and professor frank says uh well possibly or you could take something that already exists and find a new use for it. And when I heard that, I'm like, yes, 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 yes. That is like a big point of my presentation because, and kind of the theme of the, the, the conference about resilience and adapting. Um, and, you know, I'm going to talk to you obviously about Bloom's taxonomy and Qualtrics and how, you know, we use that in our environment um, but really it's about 
you know, using anything that you have, you know, in your own environments and institutions. Um, that's what we did because, you know, during the pandemic, we were in the situation where all of a sudden we had a new need to teach things in, in different ways. And um, we didn't have all the tools yet because uh, they weren't invented yet. So um, rather than waiting for some new software to be invented, um, you just had to look at what do you have available and try to find new uses for it. So that's what we did. So yeah, when I saw that, it's like, that's cool. I'm gonna put that in my presentation. <laughs> and uh, this is a shout out to yesterday's <laughs> presentation here. Um, who, who went to this one yesterday? Oh yeah, most of you, cool, that's great. Um, and the reason I put this up here because, well, this is an example of um, a presentation that was really useful. I really like these kind of presentations where they just give you lots of examples that can inspire you um, and kind of breaks down like all these different, you know, active, uh, you know, learning examples um, kind of provides, you know, kind of like a menu for you to, to choose from. Um, and um, so, yeah, I, I really appreciated this one. And I heard, let's get, just give another round of applause for, for this presentation. So, um, are any of the presenters here? Oh, hey. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Joseph Kearns and Dr. Sandra Rogers. Um, yeah, so uh, congratulations. I really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, if anyone asks you, like, how did your presentation go? You said, went well, we got, we're getting applause even the day after, so. Um, and I feel like this is also a good compliment to, to this presentation. You know, um, you talked about uh, creativity and you're gonna see that, that that's one of the levels in Bloom's taxonomy. Um, and so for, you know, the instructors like out there that wanna create some of these things, uh, it also helps to understand, you know, something like Bloom's taxonomy um like how you build up to some of these type of active learning activities and also like when you start to create maybe some of these type of activities that you see up here what kind of tools are you going to use you know maybe there's certain applications that are designed for uh certain activities um or maybe you can just use some of the tools you already have you know some like ars software um powerpoint whatever um Got to get creative, and so shout out to them. All right, so let's dive into Bloom's taxonomy. So, yeah, this talk is going to be mostly about two completely different tools. So, one is a theoretical framework for learning; the other is uh, online survey software. Um, so, very different, but they both can be used to create learning materials and they complement each other um, pretty well. And so we'll just do a quick you know, overview of what Bloom's taxonomy is. It's, um, so as you can see, it's, this, uh, it's a, a diagram that's usually depicted in this uh, pyramid shape. And like I said, it's a theoretical framework for student learning. And it's just a way to think about building learning objectives and understanding kind of like the complexity of the tasks that you're giving the students and the assignments and the, the kinds of questions that you ask them um, and it helps you uh, understand like the level at which you're, you're pushing students so um, like i said it's, it's typically depicted as a pyramid with kind of lower uh, levels of learning at the at the bottom, um, but but these are still important. You know the 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 tasks of remembering and understanding the information are the building blocks that help you get to these higher levels of um, creativity. Um, and so you have to remember, you have to you know you have to remember before you can understand. Um, but it's not always you know like a linear you know your students will be jumping around you know back and forth and um and there are examples where you could even start with like 
uh, this uh, a, a creativity kind of question and then kind of work backwards um, from that. They're, they're more rare, but the point is this isn't, you know, like set in stone. Um, and, you know, in this uh, diagram itself has kind of been revised over time. Um, but the main point is you want to always be kind of bumping up the level um, of understanding uh, with, with your students, you know, and take them up to higher, higher levels. Um, let's see, how are we doing on time? I don't have a, well, actually, I do have a watch. Let me see. 130. Okay, we're doing all right. So there's, um, is everyone, who's already kind of familiar with Bloom's taxonomy? Okay, yeah, as I figured, um, a lot of you, especially if you're already kind of like in structure. So there are tons of diagrams out there um, that you can find that kind of give you examples of different, you know, activities and different kinds of questions for each level um, of, of Bloom's taxonomy. But I came across this one, which I found really um, interesting. So uh, here you have the, the level of um, Bloom's taxonomy, RBTs stands for revised uh, Bloom's taxonomy. Um, and then for each uh, level, uh, we see like what it's testing um, and then how to test. I found this particular chart interesting because this column here, the how to test, um, shows you specifically like what type of question types would you use um, you know, so for, you know, the lower level remembering, um, you know, you're going to be using multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank, you know, so on. And then, you know, for the higher level ones, you have, you know, maybe more open question essay type questions. What I found interesting about this list is it reminded me of another question type list that I see every day when I use Qualtrics. <laughs> So when you go to Qualtrics here, so this is uh, an example of Qualtrics here. Um, how many people have already used Qualtrics? Can you raise your hand? Okay, so like almost half of you. Um, uh, maybe like for, for the, how, how are we doing in the Zoom? What's our number now? 19, okay, so it's getting higher. Well, hopefully it stays growing instead of <laughs> getting lower. But um, for the, yeah, for the people on Zoom, if you want to um, maybe put in the, the chat, like if you uh, have any experience with um, Qualtrics at your institutions. Um, and I wanted to show you kind of an example of what the interface looks like. So you have an idea of it, especially for the people who aren't familiar with it. Um, and this is that list I was talking about, the under question type. There's tons of question types. And of all the applications that we use at UCLA, um, Qualtrics by far has um, the biggest, you know, library of different types of questions that we can use. And that comes in really handy because sometimes if there's a specific kind of question type that you want to use, Qualtrics might be your only um, option. And even with multiple choice, you can do a lot of different types of multiple choice um, questions. So it's very flexible uh, in that regard. Um, and this list is longer than that. I'll show it on the, the next slide. But I just wanted to give uh, people an idea of what the interface looks like, because I'm kind of suggesting Qualtrics as um, you know, possible application that you can use in your work for creating learning materials um, and I wouldn't do that if it was you know uh, required a steep learning curve it's actually really easy to use we have uh, 5,000 users in our um, uh, license and I'm not sitting down helping all of them there would be no time to, to do that so they're all doing it like on their own and I'll, I collaborate with them uh, some of our users every, you know, once in a while, um, but, the, you know, they're, they're in there and they're creating these surveys on their own, um, and it's designed to be very user-friendly, but you can also, you know, do uh, really advanced things in this. So if you, you know, for example, if you just want to do your basic, let's put in a question, 
uh, you know, down at the bottom, you just click add new question, select your question type. If you want to edit, you know, uh, the text, you just click on the text and start, you know, editing and you can add, drop in pictures. That stuff's really easy. And then, you know, um, you can even add, uh, if you want to be more advanced, add JavaScript to the questions to give it more um, additional functionality. Um, so it's really good for all, you know, different levels. And so this is just a little more about Qualtrics here, uh, j just a list of some of the other question types um, that are available to you. So multiple choice, there's, uh, and like I said, there's lots of different options within multiple choice um, uh, that you can do. You can, you can uh, add like open-ended into a multiple choice. You can, um, you make it, you know, multiple uh, answer or single answer. Um, there's different kinds of questions like rating scales, um, matrix tables, side-by-side -side questions. Those are good when you want to create uh, like kind of group questions together into tables and kind of collect a lot of information, you know, more efficiently. Uh, drag and drop questions can be useful. Um, heat maps are for images and I'll show an example of that. Uh, slider scales, rank order, drill down. Um, there's a ton. I think they advertise they have a hundred question types. So some of those are just kind of variations of what we already see. Um, and so Qualtrics um, is already, you know, it's used by a lot of researchers, businesses, institutions. Um, there's lots of customization that you can do within uh, the question types and the survey itself. Um, it's, and it's pretty easy to distribute, you know, the surveys as well. Uh, so there's, yeah, there's a lot of different, I can go on and on about Qualtrics, but I'm not a Qualtrics salesman. And remember like also the point of uh, this presentation is not just use Qualtrics. It's, this is what I happen to use because I was in a position where, you know, I was managing you know, Qualtrics, um, and just the more I learned about it, the more I saw it as a solution for, uh, you know, some of the, the applications that we wanted to create. Um, but the point is, you know, whatever you have at your institution, just kind of see if you can use it in, in other ways. Um, and if you don't have Qualtrics, you can, ha you can create a free account. So really, you know, anyone um, can try this out if you don't already have it. Um, who's who here already has it at their from their institution like a really like full fledged like license? Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Uh, so, it's, so I'm going to show you some examples of uh, different ways that we use Qualtrics for specifically for learning. So um, we use it for all kinds of. Uh, applications uh, to help out with administrative uh, tasks, which have been really useful. Um, but we also use it for learning, and that's kind of the focus of this particular presentation, um, because there's a lot you can do with it. We already have for learning different applications for creating, you know, assessments. Um, but every once in a while, uh, there's a need to do something that um, kind of goes outside of our existing software. So for example, with um, uh, image questions, uh, when you typically when you have an image question, if you're using, you know, just like a standard um, uh, multiple choice exam, uh, or maybe even like an AR ARS software, you already have, you might already have regions um, identified, like here's region A, here's B, C, and then you, you kind of select from that on the multiple choice. Um, you can obviously do that with, with Qualtrics, but um, they have additional kind of image questions that can be kind of useful. So for example, you can do kind of like a heat map image where you can draw out regions of um, like, you know, say an X-ray, an anatomical image, or like a map, you know, the United States where you can draw, you know, borders of um, a certain cluster of states or whatever. Um, and that's pretty nice because I know in some ARS software, you're limited to just boxes and, uh, obviously we're not, 
you know, comprised of just boxes. So it's nice to be able to highlight certain areas and, and you can um, have like students rather than have the regions already identified. It just starts off as, you know, just an image with kind of no hints and you're just supposed to click exactly where, you know, you think um, there is kind of like an abnormality or, you know, whatever type of question it is. Uh, and then you'll see the answer like, you know, later on, like where the student actually selected and, um, and it kind of provides more information for the instructor. Like, do they really understand, you know, rather than just selecting a region there, kind of, um, you, you know, precisely locating something a little more accurately, which, you know, will require um, a higher level of, of learning than just remembering something or being able to identify something, but doing a little more uh, analysis. Um, so let's check out a different example here. So uh, at the level of kind of evaluation that we're doing, uh, we had a, um, an ophthalmology lab where students were given cases um, they were given six or sorry five uh, different uh, cases and they're supposed to put them in order of um, like importance from emergency to non urgent cases and it used to just be done on paper where the you had a group of students there were probably like you know eight different groups each group of students would kind of discuss the cases and rank them. And it would just be a simple rank, like, um, you know, one through five, they write it down, bring it up to the front of class, and then they sort it out and, um, and type it into a PowerPoint. So uh, when I was helping out with this particular lab and at the same time, you know, managing, you know, Qualtrics surveys, I thought, hey, there's a cool question type in here, uh, this pick, group and rank question that we could might be really ideal for this uh, kind of you know learning uh, session um, and the way it works is it's a uh, like you kind of drag and drop your cases so if we see here you have the, the five cases on the, the side you just drag them into these boxes that you could create and so these are different categories here um, and not only can you drop them into each uh, box, but once they're in the box, you can rearrange them so that, let's say you think both of these cases are both, you know, non-urgent cases, but which one is um, you know, even less important? You can kind of uh, rearrange them within these boxes. Um, and this came pretty handy because um, it's, it's easy the advantage is it's easy for the students to put them in these boxes, just opening up a Qualtrics page rather than doing it on paper. Um, and the other advantage is once it's in Qualtrics, you could kind of create a report. Um, you can create a report page like this ahead of time so that as soon as the students fill it out and, and click submit, you'll get these responses immediately in real time for the faculty. Um, so because before they were just typing, you know, reading it off paper and typing it into PowerPoint. So this is, you know, um, real time data that they get. Uh, and it gives the faculty more information to work with. Um, they, they can see in one nice view just what all, oh, oh, <laughs> I forgot. The teams get to name themselves. So they come up with some funny uh, <laughs> names here. Um, so they, they get to, the faculty get to see in one nice view what the teams uh, chose and how they rank these cases. Because um, before you wouldn't have these different categories, it'd just be case one, four, five, two, and three. You wouldn't necessarily know if they thought these were emergencies or not. So this makes it clear that you know they think all these cases are emergencies and kind of the priority that they have. Um, and so that's one of the other advantages of Qualtrics is this kind of reporting. You can make these reports ahead of time available uh, to the faculty um, to work with, you know, during the session. Um, how are we doing on time? Is it, um, I think all right. How are we doing on uh, Zoom? 
participants. Nineteen. Okay, so no one left. That's good. <laughs> um, all right, so let's move on to the next slide. So this is a another example of um, a report in Qualtrics. So there's a lot going on here. I'll have to break this down. Um, and this is an example of where uh, one of the tools that we were currently using for uh, TBL team-based learning um, wasn't going to work in a remote environment that we had to switch to all of a sudden because we ran our TBL sessions in person. Um, and during the pandemic, we had to do them remotely, which was quite a challenge to, to figure out. Um, and one of the solutions was to do some parts of it uh, in Qualtrics, um, in particular the, the IRAT and the TRAT. Um, who's here already familiar with team-based learning? Can you raise your hand a little bit? Some of you, yeah, for sure. Um, so we were using NT dashboard, and like I said, the, remotely, it wasn't going to work because everything on Zoom just needed to um, work. We couldn't do any troubleshooting and it needed to be like really quick. Um, so I created the IRAT and the TRAT and just for people who aren't familiar with, with that, the IRAT is just an individual assessment. So just imagine like a 10 um, question quiz that uh, the students will do individually. Um, and after they're done with that, you know, maybe it takes them like 10 minutes. They go into their group and they take the same quiz as a group. Um, but this time they discuss each question as a team, you know, one by one. They select an answer um, and they submit it. If it's wrong, they get another chance and they keep submitting until they get the right answer. Um, so. That's just kind of like how the beginning of a typical TBL session works. Um, and so we built that in, in Qualtrics. It's just, that part was just simple multiple choice um, questions. So there wasn't anything too sophisticated about that. Um, where it got sophisticated was kind of putting them into teams and, and scoring it by teams, which you can do in Qualtrics. So you can put group people together in teams and you can do scoring. Um, and then the big thing was making a report because with the software we used previously, uh, one of the nice selling points was as the students are taking um, the individual assessment and the group assessment, the faculty can see in real time how they're doing and start to design the feedback session right after that based on what they were seeing like oh everyone's having trouble on question three um you know and they're and they're picking you know option c so what, what's going on there and then um, they can start figuring out like how they're going to address that in in class but you kind of need that data you know in real time which we had so uh, we were able to recreate that in Qualtrics because you can create the report, um, set up the report like ahead of time. And as the students uh, complete the individual assessment, you get that data in, in real time. And then same thing with the, um, the team assessment. So what you're looking at here is they can go by, the faculty can look at this question by question you know, it's like, okay, let's look at question two. What's going on? How are the students doing? Um, the check mark indicates what the correct answer is supposed to be, be. So you can see here, it's like, okay, the students individually are picking, you know, D. So something's going on there. Let's figure out why that might be. They're obviously missing something. Um, and then you can compare it, the individual results directly with the team results. Um, so, you know, here, if a lot of people are picking D uh, as an individual, then they're probably going to be, as a group, kind of pushing for, for D. So you can see a lot of people were picking um, D as a, the, their first choice. Um, 
and you can kind of you know create that information um, all for the the faculty to look at you know in real time and, and kind of make uh, you know decisions on on how to address that and in this next slide I know there's a lot going on here and there's also more uh, fun team names here as you can see um, this is just another way of kind of re reporting um, the TBL results so in this case we're seeing it by team um, and uh, and you can show like for instance because um, it's important to kind of know uh, maybe the order of uh, answers that the uh, students are choosing so what you're seeing here this is for a, one particular question right this is how they all answered one particular question and it shows you um okay looks like uh the correct answer was d so if you pick d as your first choice boom you're done it tells you yeah you got it right um now let's see this group here had some you know trouble they had uh they didn't get on their first choice or the second or third and you get to see kind of um, where they started uh, and so the faculty have this information in real time as well so they can see you know what are students you know as a group you know picking as their first choice besides you know the correct one you know and and they can kind of use this as well uh, to inform um, how they teach um, and you can see here for those of you who keep score with your TBL that Qualtrics has the ability to do that um, it doesn't have to be TBL but like any kind of assessment that you create you have the ability to kind of create points um, you can do really advanced stuff with like weighting and all that so this is just kind of like an example of a, another Qualtrics report that you can do let's see how we're checking on the time so we got like 10 minutes yeah all right doing good I definitely want to save time for for questions um, and so uh, kind of, the, you know, at the higher level of Bloom's text on when you have the, the creation, um, where you're, you're creating something new to show, kind of uh, put together everything that you've, you've learned. Um, and so some examples of uh, creation uh, activities, uh, you know, might be, well, you can have something big like doing a research project and so Qualtrics is you know ideal for that because a lot of researchers use it so you can create you know research surveys within it um, but even activities were you know going back maybe to a TBL example um, at usually the TBL kind of ends with a group project you kind of do your you know assessments at the beginning but then you kind of want the group to come together um, and maybe create something new, create, um, you know, uh, you know, some kind of prototype or, you know, activity. Uh, and there's different ways that you can do that in Qualtrics if you want to share, like even if they're just creating something on some other application, a concept map application, um, just word, if they're just typing something out or if they're drawing something on a you know big piece of paper and then they can just snap a picture of that um, you can do things like upload files into Qualtrics so that's another question type I don't know if I mentioned you can upload files um, and then you can kind of display that so is anyone familiar kind of like you know the, the old gallery like walk around activities that you've probably done in TBL or or even in um, you know uh, like training or whatever uh, you can recreate you know something like that in Qualtrics just because you know with all these different question types um, it really kind of opens up a lot of uh, possibilities um, let's I don't know if I think that might be my last slide yes uh, in, in case you know there's questions I, I definitely want to have time for that so um, if there's any questions in the chat or here we can start it yeah, I see someone. Hey, my name is Jill. Thank you so much for this session today. Sure. Um, I'd like to learn a little bit more about the research, the one that you just did. If you can walk us through an example with a little more detail, one of the research projects using Qualtrics 
I don't, I don't have any specific research projects. I mean, I've, I've helped some students with research projects. We have a lot of researchers that do research projects in Qualtrics, and um, there's lots of options in terms of um, doing a research project as far as uh, the different kinds of questions that you ask, um, different kinds of survey flow, like if you want to um, You know, at the at the start of like say a research project, you have different uh, people in mind on who you want to um, ask different questions of. It can it can break off into uh, you know different areas of the survey. So it's more of a live activity, a synchronous activity rather than an asynchronous activity. It can be it can be both. It can be both. Uh, I was kind of referring to you doing a research project. You know, um, uh, on your own, like you're you're sending it to participants. Um, you can you can do activities um, in a live setting as well. Um, so the ones that I showed, those reports, were live sessions where you can you can create um, the report, the structure of the report ahead of time, and then the data will fill in 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 real time. So there's there's a lot of different ways. Um, that you can just we have in like, like I said we use this in you know in in, in these type of settings in uh, live you know student uh, learning sessions uh, and we have researchers using it all the time for like their big research projects they're sending out surveys through text message you know to patients um, you know 30,000 patients at a time and gathering data you know through that um, so yeah there's there's a lot of uses for it. Thank you. Of course. Oh, we got a question? Yeah, Online? Let's see if I can, this makes it a little more audible. Um, I'm wondering about the mechanism used in the TRAP portion of the TBL to facilitate picking an answer. Do they try again until they get it right, or is it a ranking type question? Uh, the way that we set up the, the TRAT is you select your answer option, um, and if it's wrong, it'll tell you that it's wrong, and then you select again. Um, and then once you select the right answer, it tells you that it's, it's right. So it works similar to uh, in that regard, other um, TBL software that we've done, and um, and similar to the if at cards, if people are familiar with that, like you know, even in terms of uh, the scoring. Um, but if you wanted to modify it, you you could probably do different you know uh, modifications with it, and that would be a benefit of you know if you if you're using something like Qualtrics you have a little more flexibility if if you want to simplify things or if you want to um, make things more complex than, than another application a quick response from Tim cool that seems ideal and just like the scratchers we use thank you there's another question from Chris uh, the question is how do you handle pulling scores for teams and individuals into your LMS we, we uh, right now we don't have we're not bringing in scores into our LMS and our specific LMS is um, uh, Griffin, which is a version of uh, Elentra. Um, it it might be able to be done. We uh, we haven't tried that, and I don't know if, if you you might have more luck if you're using um, you know a, a more popular like LMS, is it like Canvas or something like that. that the, the Canvas integration will be something that I'm eager to explore as well. Thanks for the question. Thanks for the question. Um, Whoa, geez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question is more in lines of the functionality of Qualtrics, 
are you, do you see the functionality to display questions based on metadata of the student, either from single sign-on or import of sorts? Uh, so for an example, say uh, the student is from a specific college and the form is to file for candidacy for a uh, student government position. And when they log in, it'll read metadata either from an import data set or from the SSO and acknowledge, oh, the student is from X college. So they'll have two options for the senator position. It would be campus-wide or X college. Yeah, that's a great question. And and yeah, you have you have different options for that. Um, so some of our surveys uh, do have an SSO authenticator in it. Um, so you can pull in certain amounts of data and that's good because for security reasons, you can set up a survey, especially for some kind of student assessment because we already have those users in the system. So we can use that to make sure that it's a student logging in and then once they're kind of logged in, we have some basic information from them. Um, in addition to that, you, uh, you can create your own contact list uh, with different kinds of information um, beyond what we might you know, already have on them. And you can use that um, as, a, as a way to authenticate a, a user. So once they log in, we can kind of pull data from that contact list to, you know, um, to see, you know, what other information we want to be able to access, maybe they filled out before, you know, like what, what, what you were saying, like what school they were from or, or whatever, anything you think of, it, there's no limit, you can create your own contact list with as many columns as you want, you know, with different information on there and you can use that, um, you know, to, to retrieve uh, information when they log in. And they can add to it over time uh, as well. Does that answer your question? Does that give you another question? Go ahead. Kind of. Um, my other question is, is Qualtrics more or less, once they're done with the survey, it just lives, the data lives in there, it seems like. Um, but is there ever a case where that needs to be sent to someone else? So kind of leading towards a workflow and stuff happens after the survey is complete? A great. workflow. Yeah, that's a great question. And the answer is yes, you can do um, a lot with, with workflows. And, and that, that's, a, that's a huge feature that I didn't even mention you know, in, in my presentation. So it's good that you asked that. Um, once a survey is submitted, yeah, you have that data in the Qualtrics servers, but you can set up workflows so that, you know, once someone submits a survey, um, you can send an email maybe back to the person that filled it out with a summary of what they submitted, you know, for their own records, and it could get sent to, you know, um, whoever's managing the survey or whoever you want. Um, and you can even add conditions to that. So say one of the questions is, what department are you in? You know, like out of five departments, uh, once the survey is submitted, you can have a workflow that says, if they pick department A, send an email to the head of department A, you know, and if they, you know, select a department B, send an email to department B. Um, so you can do things uh, like that, you know, with the, you know, adding different conditions. So it can even be more, complicated than that you could have like maybe a, a survey where one person fills it out and then it goes to another person automatically they fill out a portion of it and so on is that it time's up time's up i, I can stick around for questions but i think we got to end it in terms of like the zoom and all that so thank you all for coming and thanks again for staff for making this happen